Hey everyone, Nick Engvall here. Before we get into today's episode, I want to tell you about some of the people that make the sneaker history community and this podcast possible. It's more important than ever to think about who you give your money to when you're buying clothing to go with your kicks. Our friends at Guilty Goods started their brand with a goal of giving back, especially to the communities that make sneaker culture possible. With every purchase from Guilty Goods, at least 10% of the proceeds are donated to organizations like Big Brothers and Big Sisters, the Susan G. Komen Foundation, Movement for Black Lives, and many more. You can save 30% on your order by using the code HISTORY at GuiltyGoods.us. Again, that's HISTORY at GuiltyGoods.us for 30% off, and you can feel good about your purchase knowing you're supporting a meaningful cause. Sneakers are all about presentation, and if you're like me, displaying your kicks at home or in the office is just as important as when they're on your feet. Sneaker Throne makes sneaker display cases featuring customizable LED lights, drop side cases to showcase the entire side of the shoe, not just the heel or the toe, the whole shoe. They've also got display cases for trading card collectors and hat collectors. To me, it's the perfect way to display your collection. You can save at least 10% on your Sneaker Throne order by using the code HISTORY at SneakerThrone.com. That's HISTORY at SneakerThrone.com. If you're a Patreon supporter or a member of our Discord community, you already know about Kicks with V Hot Sauce and his small batch locally sourced hot sauce. V has been one of the biggest supporters of sneaker history and the podcast since the early days. and He's currently the defending champion in our Community Trivia Nights competition. Kicks with V Hot Sauce has been a huge hit with the community. You can save 10% on your order by using the code SNEAKERHISTORY10 at KICKSWITHVHOTS.COM. That's SNEAKERHISTORY10 at KICKSWITHVHOTS.COM. Now, you're probably here because you like sneakers, and if you join the Discord, you know our community is about so much more than that. Whether it's the marathon-like community calls, trivia night debates, the in-person meetups, we're just sharing our favorite experiences. We found that although we have such different backgrounds, we all have some unexpected shared passions. Not only does the entire community look out for each other when it comes to releases, we're like a support group for life in general. You can join the Discord community for free by heading to the show notes of this episode. After you're done listening to this episode, tell someone you like their kicks today. You never know how far a simple compliment can take you, and we all know how good it feels to have someone show their appreciation. Now let's get into today's episode. Jordan trying to shake off Starks. Oh, what a move! Against Gill, the crowd on its feet. Allen for the win! Yeah! To the Sneaker History Podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Sneaker History Podcast, episode number 201. Boom, 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 boom. It's a party up in here. If you could see on YouTube, Rhodes' face just going crazy. <laughs> You'll enjoy it. But I'm chilling here with Roa and Mike. What's up, guys? What up, man? Happy to uh, make another week. We're just making it go, go around, man. Yep. We are now through WandaVision, and I enjoy the week that we're going to get in terms of a break before the Falcon and the Winter Soldier hits. So let's get mm-hmm. after it. My orange box cutter makes the world go round, I believe is what you're looking for. He's Mike's here somewhere. Are, are you doing okay, Mike? Are you in the quantum realm? Are you lost? Oh, uh, you know, multiverse, Mike. I, I mean, considering it, I'm not the show's over now. I'm just like patiently waiting for the next thing. You know, I'm just kind of like in a dead space. I'm like, come on, next thing. I, I'm I'm a junkie for for content, so this is this waiting period is killing me. That's the point I'm going to bring up is being junkie content. <laughs> junkie content. <laughs> Flip it. Content <laughs> junkies is the word I'm looking phrase I'm looking for. We'll go into that in a moment here, but let's get into the nitty gritty. Let's kind of just go through our business that we have here at Sneaker History. First, because we always forget, um, South by Sneakers mm-hmm. happening next week, the 16th through 20th, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. That is correct. Um, might be getting dates mixed up, but. Uh, yep. Great collection of talent, minds, in and around the sneaker community. It's going to be a really great time. Make sure you keep your eyes peeled for that, and that you're following their Instagram account, I guess our Instagram account for that, and we'll leave the link to that in the description of this video. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you like and subscribe. Subscribe. I just can't talk today. <laughs> I need to get my hooked on phonics. I need to go re-download the CD-ROM and work on my skills but like and subscribe to the channel like the video 
all of that helps us very much. We saw everybody checking out our discussion about the West Coast kicks. West Coast Joe, <laughs> um, that did really well. So please keep that energy with our future videos. We appreciate everybody who tunes in. Now, I'm going to slow it down. Row it. Do we have any kind of reviews or happier or sad news? We have two reviews on Audible. Nice. Because we want to make sure as people are leaving us reviews in Apple, you can also leave us reviews at Audible. So what oh. I will do is I will read the review that was not written by me. I'll save that for another episode. But <laughs> Alba, it wasn't me. Alba Kezada, I'm sorry, Kezada, uh, has, lived, uh, has left. Oh, my goodness. I think the mumbles have got me as well, Robbie. She's left us a five-star review, and the heading is like having a beer with friends. I'm using my wife's account to write this review. Love the pod. Always listen to it on the different platforms. It's like having a beer with your friends and talking sneakers. Hands down, one of the best sneaker podcasts out there. If you're new or old to sneakers, it doesn't matter. These guys give us the most honest opinion, even recommendations on copying or passing. They even have a Discord community to help out one another. You really need to get on that, too. Let this be a reminder that I've given five plus five star reviews on iTunes, but for some reason you haven't gotten them. Even left some messages in the 800 number. I got boundary issues. Still got those M&Ms, fam? So thank you, Alba's husband. I hope <laughs> that between the four of us, somebody can get you some M&Ms because with that amount of dedication, you deserve at least one of those All of them. two pound bags. That guy was like a man of recaps review. Like that was it. fantastic. He gave us a segue into copying and passing too. So yeah, was, I just want to give this man truly is like, the perfect review, sir. You win. You win reviews. <laughs> That's fantastic. We appreciate that. And like Rowett said, you can leave a review on Audible, on Apple, but you can listen to this in a couple of different places. So the love wherever left is much appreciated. What are you guys rocking and copping? What's on your collective radars? Yeah, man. So what I've been rocking is is one I I just got. Is this the King's Throne or Watch the Throne LeBron 16? It wasn't just going to sit in the box. No, no, no. These had to go straight to foot. I wore them all weekend. And, dude, this might actually be the most comfortable LeBron I've ever put my foot into. It was, it was insane immediately. I didn't Great think shoe. it was going to happen. But as soon as I went in, instant comfort. Um... What I'm copping. You know what? I'm kind of looking at the uh, the Stussy Hirachi because they have just plummeted in price. Everyone forgot about them as soon as they released. So I see, I've seen them a couple places for like 120, 110. I'm going to go ahead and probably snag a pair when the time's right. Okay. Yeah, man. What about you, Rowett? Uh, today I wore my Nike Air Max LD0 Hiroshi Fujiwara because I needed to make that daily trip to the mailbox and I figured let me stunt on these people that may or may not be watching. Uh, <laughs> very comfortable shoe. I think we're in Air Max month as well as International Women's Month. So I figured there's that synergy there. And then on a whim, I was like, you know what? We're going to talk about a Marvel franchise. Let me talk about what the greatest Marvel franchise was for me, which was the Spider-Verse movie and obviously the Jordan 1's. And it's been on my list for a while, and I said, yeah, let's see what it goes for right now, because if it's in a certain price point, I think I'll pull the trigger today. It was not even within 200 of the price point, I thought, so that yeah. is a shoe I will now only wave in appreciation. I don't know if I'll ever get to buy, because we've always kind of talked about how the Jordan ones are having a moment, but beautiful shoe, beautiful movie, and not for me, apparently. Robbie, how about yourself? Um... Many moons ago, I was uh, trying to think of the PC way of saying this phrase. I uh, I waited too long to buy the uh, origin story ones, and they were on uh, Stadium Goods in a twelve and a half and a weird size. They were like two hundred and fifty dollars less than the other sizes, like a twelve and a thirteen. So I was like, ah, do I want to spend three fifty? And by the time I finally came to the conclusion that I want to spend the money, they were gone. And the next in line, the next cheapest, was like six hundred dollars. Oh. So like ah, so that one hurts. That yeah, you would think maybe it's a reasonable price. It's not reasonable. No. And that sucks. I'll keep it one trillion with you guys. I'm still on my I'm still on my Hanes house slipper Classics. game, unbeat. For sure. 
undefeated. I mean, they're beat, so, but they're they're undefeated when it comes to housing sweat and smelling weird. So, <laughs> hey, time to flip. Those. They're the Get champions of champions of nothing, uh, <laughs> jack of all trades. But uh, when it comes to Coppin, I put some thought into it, and there's really like nothing shoe wise I'm I really want to buy right now. I wish I would have got the D Brown pumps. But like I've quick, never man. really worn pumps. They went so fast. Apparently they I sold never out. wear them. It's not even cool to have them though. You you have one of those days you're like, you know what? Let's do something different. Pump it up. Yeah, let me get my Joe Budden on and pump it up on these people. I could never even look at the shoe without thinking about that song. <laughs> so that's another reason why. But I mean they're cool. Just um I've been finding myself just like looking i have like five shoes in mind that i kind of want from the past like six months of releases i'm looking for the right price so you're um, going back in archives nothing new but some some things you might want to fall back into something i don't know even what those things are though like they're kind of <laughs> just like i'm like well if a jordan won for less than like four hundred dollars and i don't have the colorway and i like it a lot like, well fuck i could be like five different shoes I mean, like, you gotta get to 20 so you gotta start working on that gotta get to 20 so i must work on it um oh the the popcorn air force one oh, was clean. interesting to me clean oh i think said corny i was like nah good no point. i mean they're they're buttery but no i love that shoe i hope the leather uh, as as looks in the uh, picture well played Nothing yeah, really on the radar. The truth of what you're both saying there. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Way to just complete the holy trinity of being corny. Yes. <laughs> on that note, I have to. We're going to talk about Marvel. We're going to discuss. Think of this as like part two of the WandaVision episode we did a bit ago. We're going to wrap that up, give you some thoughts on the Falcon and Winter Soldier. But before that, I need to tell you about this, a pandemic within a pandemic, yes. because I have gone and asked people since having such frightful interactions with this shoe, and it's been pretty uniform, just nobody wants to talk about it to, to curse the dunk gods in fear of not winning another pair, but dunks have been awful, and it's not just this UNLV pair, I kept my mouth silent. But my Michigan State pair, like, it's bubbled. Like, the outsole, it, like, what? bubbles. It's it's wrong. Yeah. I was going to do it inside Robbie's closet. I'm waiting for my cool gray threes to get here first. But I'm going to do it inside Robert's, Robert, Robert. Robbie's <laughs> closet with these. And I'm going to pull out the Michigan State to, to show that I'm not crazy. Like, they are defective ass shoes. It's And I wish I was kidding. Like, normally... Oh, if it's not perfect, it's real. Like, no, these are just like so busted. <laughs> it's like, yes, it took too much of the serum or t too much gamma there you go. radiation See, you exposure. There we go. And it's just, it turned into a red piece of. So, just for starters, what dunks have a toe box where it's like 80% toe <laughs> and then like 20%? foxing that's not foxing but is that foxing i don't even know oh, but mud guard. shapes all wrong but when you look at it from the top it's got like a fat head like so it's rounded <laughs> still it's like the white parts round but do you notice it's just like a flat head yeah something like, like hit it, it with a freaking mallet dude or a top. screwdriver or something <laughs> and it's bubbled what really sucks about this though this is the right foot it literally feels like a left foot so the back heel it feels like you put your damn shoe on backwards and the heel cup is this like incorrectly put in there. There's something wrong with underneath the toe box with like stitching to where it pinches. Like it's literally wearing two left shoes. And when you look at it and how just like square the toe is compared to the left shoe, like I swear to God, they gave me two lefts and it said it was a right. Cause I'm doing this as, proof that they really are a left and a right but it's insane how bad these shoes are and my michigan states are awful i've asked a couple people who i know have dunks if their pairs are trash i'm not going to call them out they agree 
They just won't say it out loud because you don't they don't want to talk bad. Guys. Like this but I love these shoes. I wanted these shoes so bad for so long. And I literally, I'm not going to sell them because like I want them in the collection. But I'm also not going to fucking wear them. And that's like equally frustrating. Like maybe if I take the the sock liner out and I put my own insole in there. Who knows? I just tried, but like, I know, like bending them a bit. See if to loosen up the leather. I don't know if the leather's even good enough to loosen up. Like, why don't you just make a shoe good? I, hey, I'm right there with make you. Make it good, like. You got to ask gotta, Joe Dirt. <laughs> make it good, like. I got a mic right here and a backup mic right here. <laughs> Test yeah, right. Who wants to go? Uh, check one, check two. Check one, but check it's two. awful, man. Dang. It's like Nike you you, you, together, you wait, you wait so and like I know the white and black pairs are going to be this like I know every pair is going to be the same. I've had some people say that the curries, the uh, the mid curries or I guess high tops, yeah, oh. from like a week ago, those have very nice materials and those are cool. But like, I'm not going to give you a, a gold star for making one shoe right when like the two pairs I've acquired from you, Nike, are just like l- like literally this is like startup company bad. Like, it, uh, what's you call what's the homeboy's name that got in trouble? Warren Lots. Is it Warren? Warren Lots made it makes a better sneaker <laughs> than this. And it's like the materials trash can too. It's like everything about the only thing that isn't trash can about this shoe is the fact that it's UNLV colors and it's a low top of the be true to your schools. Low tops fit better than highs or mids and dunks, in my opinion. That's the only thing cool. Like this having a story is why I bought it. Like if this wasn't if this was any other shoe. I would just return it, but yeah. our Discord members—they've tried to reach out to Nike about their product. Like, Nike doesn't care; they're going to tell me to return it, Can and it's like, it? well, no shit. I'm—I uh, know I know what my options are, so I'm going to stick to my option of burning. I could go light a hundred dollars on fire and have the exact same turnout as this, but at least I can look at this on my wall and think, oh, my hometown—that's cool. But you can't wear them. It's like literally the worst made pair of shoes I've ever put my foot in. Do you think it's because they start, they're producing more? I won't say mass producing because they're still hard to get. But is it just the pairs? It's that Nike. Made? Well, no, mass no. producing. Well, what I was gonna say is like looking at the say like the ugly duck duckling pack. I haven't owned any I haven't owned any new dunks, so I don't know the fits. But is it? Would you have people who had those maybe say those fit better when they were more limited? And now they're just like cranking them out to feed the masses. I, it's hard to say that that they're just kind of like whatever, just put whatever out. Nike's been moving units since '85. I, no, before I, that, I got you. I got you. What I'm saying is that are they are they skimping? Because the, the dunk wasn't really just. Eh, it was kind of like a couple years back. No one cared, and now they're like getting a little, you know, attention again. Is it that they're just kind of? All right, we made a couple limited ones that were really nice. Now we're going to, I guess, mass produce them again. And they're just like, let's put half the effort in and move forward. Maybe this is what Nike SB was referring to when they're saying these aren't dunks anymore. And <laughs> they're actually not that, dunks. That, There's that, something different now. This is their subliminal way of saying like, eh. Warren yeah, I mean, it, the next, it's uh, worrisome the because board. to your point, as well, Mike, they've been releasing these a little bit more freely and liberally than in years past. And I wonder, is this the new dunk? And are we going to have a post dunk or pre dunk thing? And this is going to be the new norm going forward because I wonder how much longer that dunk hype is going to maintain if this is the product. But this is just one man's opinion of, hmm, what's wrong with the dunk franchise? Because I was still of the opinion that when they brought those dunks back on Nike by you, I was like, this isn't going to end well, especially given the limited options that we were about to even yeah. encounter during that interface that's when i was like okay you know what i'm gonna sit this dunk thing out because maybe there's more to this i'm with you on that i try for robbie though Do i don't want to yeah. sit i'm giving the syracuse the last try it's a women's like, shoe no uh they there's men sizes in there now oh, they are? Yeah. oh okay at first they're only women's loaded i bet you then they didn't have them on site yet so they only put women's up Makes sense. until men's prize men's sizes came on but like, I'll I'll give it one more. I'll buy one more. Like you, you'll fool me once. Whatever George W said. Um, That's a good strategy there. Yeah, fool me twice. Can't be fooled again. But no, yeah. If I give you, 
Uh, I think that was 120 for the high top Michigan State. So yeah, I'm already 220 deep, and they're un- like unwearable. Yeah. When the other ones are wearable, but just you'll see in the video, like they're they're warped. Makes no sense. Chaos magic. I'll maintain yeah, that's that. A, <laughs> that's the only thing we can. Uh, only thing we can say is the reason behind it is chaos magic. Chaos or greed. I don't know, but I'm, I'm not gonna. Both. <laughs> yeah, I tr- I try not to jump down Nike's throw. But even just like looking at this shoe from an angle like at, off to the side, like the toe's wrong. It's like, but you have a right to be upset, consumer. You gave money to a company, yes. you expected something back. If you were just saying yeah. that and didn't have the pair, it's a different story. But you couldn't get your foot in there without it just doing this. Like, <laughs> in all honesty, I literally took them off and I put my ons on, and I went and did my errands. I was stoked. I had my fit on. I was in one of these UNLV dunks. So I was like, yeah, undead stock like, life. Ugh. What's up? And then I took them off and I put on my goofy Whoop. ons, which they're fantastic. But you compared just to UNLV, they're, they're goofy. Yeah. It, it, I, I went from getting a fit off to being extremely comfortable. <laughs> and then I was like, damn, I'm in my 30s. Like, extremely comfortable feels great. Come join us, right? It's like uh, the whole metaphor of come on home when you see brothers with a receding hairline. Just come on home, Ravi. Join us in the comfort leisure of life because there is no better fit than a comfortable fit. Amen. Oh, Rowan, one day you'll join Mike and I, but you you, you have a fine hairline. I know, man. I'm jealous of the full luscious head of hair you have. I'm just like, mine all did this. When you hear him, fell on my face. I'm giving you hair vibes because I, I realize I'm a very follically gifted uh, individual. <laughs> and I will try to share the wealth. So if you need me to do a extra special prayer for you, I know it's a, a bit heretic, but I will do it just because just, of the fact that I want you guys to join me in this luscious, luscious thing. I live my best hair life through Roet. It's just like, hey, yeah. what you doing on Instagram? Look at that hair. There it is. <laughs> yeah. No, it was the funniest thing because I liked a couple of my barber's posts and – because Instagram is comprised of that same chaos magic we were talking about when it comes to inferior dunk production, my wife kept getting barber videos because I swear they know who you're married to. So they think, oh, if one person is looking at these videos, you must <laughs> really like it. looking at these videos. So she's like, I have nothing against African-American barber shops, but I don't know why I keep getting these videos. I said, I don't know what to tell wrong you. So audience, she's, like, you... Wrong <laughs> she's like, can you just not like his post for five months? And I was like, okay, how about three months? So we negotiated it down. And I'm happy to say now she doesn't get those videos anymore. But I feel bad because we have to support all black businesses right now. And I will continue to do that. I just don't want it to possibly affect my wife's Proud Instagram. <laughs> she just watched the trailer to Coming to America too, And then she, I just watched the movie. she was like, wait, Eddie Murphy plays all these characters? <laughs> Has she seen oh, the original man. one yet? Oh, I've Ooh. seen it a million times. I don't know who hasn't seen it. No, I don't know, Rod, I don't know if your wife has seen the original one. Uh, no, I think I will probably make her watch it because I think I've held out long enough to not see the sequel. And I hear it's been getting decent reviews. Have you guys checked the sequel out? I literally just finished watching it. It wasn't as bad as the initial reviews were saying. It's not the first one. That's why everybody's kind of nostalgic towards that. But it's, it's definitely watchable and has some moments of laughter. So it's good entertainment. I, I was going to say, I don't think we'll ever get that type of movie anymore just because no, of the won't. fact that, knock on wood, we're living in a quote-unquote better era now. So there is probably a little more cultural sensitivity when it comes to matters like that. Yeah. But that being said, part of the allure of the first coming to America was the fact that it was so out there and it was so raw. Mm-hmm. Pardon the bad Eddie Murphy-related pun, but it's we'd never <laughs> seen a movie like that before in terms of a national context. So. Yep. Oh, you're right. Man. What's crazy is like... 20 plus years, 89. We're going on 30. I think 89 is when Coming to America, the first one, came out. 32 years now. 32 years between the first and second one. And this is not the first movie. That's definitely a longer gap between first and second. But I think Zoolander 2, Blade Runner. Anchorman 2, Blade Runner. So all these movies, Hollywood, let's just say Hollywood, Silver Screen 2, both movies and TV try to bring back the same product Mm -hmm. years later and it's typically stale not the same missing something insert negative comment yeah but sneakers it's so funny how like sneakers we can keep getting the same dunk 
since like what 85 no 80 that's not the same dunk that's something different <laughs> maybe that's the modern day remake of a dunk right um but we can get the same shoe over and over and over again and not be and not bad at eye thirst yep. for it want Indeed. it and marvel is a whole different thing because they they retcon more than retro, right? Yeah, they don't right. really retro con. They retcon like, oh, we did this. We need to turn that back so we can have another comic book line where Cap isn't dead. Whatever situation it might be, yeah. but you can keep turning out the same thing over and over again, repackaged. Another great example is like Iron Man's origin story being changed throughout the decades to modernize and keep him up to date. I'm sure 20 years from now, there'll be a different relevant Iron Man origin story. But movies like Coming to America 2 wait too long and doesn't really have the same effect. Shoes can retro the exact same thing 30 years later and we still want it. But Marvel, which is like neither and both, can have the exact same thing constantly coming out, but just in different packaging and different stories and keeps it moving. So I'm going to use that as our segue just to kind of start freelancing our thoughts. So give or take what you think. I'm going to throw this first question out there. Was WandaVision a success? A hundred percent. It set the stage for everything else. And everyone thought this was going to, be the oh, okay this would be the fun one that we really have to invest in this has turned into people are now salivating for 2022 to a march 2022 to come for dr strange because that's the direct tie-in uh, along with spider-man but you're going to get more of wanda in dr strange and spider-man so and with that ending like this is pretty much confirmed what we talked about in our patreon episode that scarlet witch wanda is going to be the foreseeable phoenix uh, figure for the Avengers slash, you know, whoever else jumps into the foray, foray of, so you may have Fantastic Four popping up sooner than later. The Eternals are next on the slate. Shang-Chi, this may be that, you know, in game where they have to come together and figure out, hey, what do we do about her? And it set up pretty nicely right now. I think it was a success in a couple different ways it was fire content it moved the mythology along which is i think every marvel fan wants that from every marvel property is give us a little bit of a excitement to clamor on but also answer questions that were set up five movies ago that we still don't have answers for in that tradition one division gave us a couple questions that we still probably won't see any answers to until maybe multiverse or dr strange's multiverse movie at the earliest but who's to say it's also successful in the sense that now Marvel has another offering. So they proved to us that they can make high tops. And now they've shown to us they can do low tops as well. Because going forward, what's to say that as a Marvel fan, I prefer a nine-hour episodic season over a two-hour movie. Because I really get to flesh things out. And if we're looking at it from a comic book perspective, TV seems to be more of an adaptable medium. And I wonder... As this pandemic continues to go longer and longer, and Black Widow is going to be the test case because how are they going to release that? What is Marvel's option going forward? Because I think you now could almost say, we don't need theaters anymore because if we decide to embrace the episodic content more, that serves the comic book medium. That also takes our safety out of our hands, meaning do I want to risk going to a movie theater even though we may or may not have been vaccinated? So I think... Then once again, they're doing everything right, and everybody's going to kind of adapt their strategy to see, hey, man, this is what Marvel did. Let's see what we can do in our realm. Yeah. It's a double-edged sword because I also like the long extended storytelling. But on the flip side, I enjoy getting a whole plot in two hours, two and a half hours, pushing three depending on what on what, on what movie you're, you're watching yeah. but i can always read backstory later i can always be filled in by russo brother this stuff during you know you know uh, publicity of the movie you can fill me in there like <laughs> i don't need to have every single answer i want to enjoy a plot 
set sure. pieces, have my oh damn. I don't want to have to like I like waiting every Friday to have a little a little oh damn, but like having just like oh damn Thor's fighting Iron Man and Hulkbuster that's just tight. <laughs> like having those moments or like Vision versus you know Ultron. I don't know why I keep going to Age of Ultron because I just rewatched it after we talked about it. Well, bomb. they kept popping up after you in the episode. They kept boop. Want to watch this movie? We- if we run out of WandaVision talk, let's talk about Age of Ultron because we did the same thing. And I think the movie's actually done better now in hindsight. But anyway, let's get through Wanda first. But it's just like, I like having not uh, not having to wait. Because well, like, there's so many times in WandaVision, I'm like, cool, this is going along. But like, I want the ride to like, go. Like, go faster, horse. And it doesn't. Uh, well, I think we've gotten used to, because when the Marvel shows were on Netflix... Daredevil dropped Friday at, you know, midnight, and I was sitting there waiting, and I crushed the first, you know, it was, what, 12 episodes, I crushed the first six, and just keep going, I just have a binge fest for a whole weekend, I think we're getting used to that, but I think these streaming services are trying to make people stay, because they realize that when you have a hit show, people watch it all and then unsubscribe, so now they got you at least locked in for, what, nine weeks now, so I got you for two months of subscription, and hopefully you forget to, you know, cancel. And just keep rolling with the punches. This guy. Genius. Are you Disney <laughs> cops, Mike? Are you Disney yeah, cops? Is know, that what's up? Just, no, I will say this about the one division. Oh, of course. Uh, <laughs> they, once again, have reinvented a genre in a sense. Because this is a story about grief. And this is probably the saddest piece of Marvel content we've seen. Because ultimately, the show is about one woman's handling of everything she's loved ever being taken away from her, whether it's slowly or whether it's quickly. And it gives us more of a fleshed out perspective of this character, because ultimately this is a character that will almost always be defined by the tragedy, at least within this universe, as we know it to be currently constructed. Marvel's ability to make these stories into other pieces of content and not only keep us involved because we're Marvel diehards. We're going to go see whatever Marvel thing that there is, but to the wives, the girlfriends, the non Marvel fans, this is how they get them involved. And they are geniuses because afterwards my wife just said, can we please watch Ultron now? Because I keep seeing a commercial for it. I keep having my brother who's a big Marvel head also tell me you should watch Ultron because it fleshes out WandaVision so much more. And it's absolutely true. And like I said, I don't understand how they don't miss, so to speak, because I thought Pixar was going to have the longest active streak of, okay, whatever the movie is, I don't know what it is, but I'm going to go see it. (laughs) But Disney has almost trumped that now by saying, yeah, Pixar, hold our beer, Marvel's the new hotness, and it's the new consistency, which is absurd to say because we're, what, 30 movies in? Something like that. I don't even know anymore. It's just too many to count at this point. I mean, we're going into phase four, right? Yep. Yeah, so this was... uh... I think the great thing about it is not only the show, but this was the first time, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I really think this was the first time we got our taste of Fox-owned properties inside of it because it's the first time they could use the word Scarlet Witch because they didn't own that right. They could use Wanda in old Age of Ultron, but they couldn't call her Scarlet Witch because of the X-Men rights. So the first time we got that crossover, we got the, uh, the tease again from the multiverse that we're still not quite there. Because ends up that Evan Peters was playing another character, but I think there's still more to that. But you know, they just like to kind of they did it with Spider-Man: Far From Home, you know, with the tease of, of um, oh my God, Mysterio, and then they keep they keep doing it because they know we're gonna get it eventually. So I like the fact it's gonna pay off and we're gonna actually see what happens. Um, but getting into the show, I think it ended well. I know people were going for the Mephisto thing, but I say don't let go to theory yet. Because if you guys, I mean, I think we gave you ample time to watch it. You know, pure spoiler alerts now. But if you look at the end credit scene, not the mid credit, but the end credit, when she is doing the astral projection of herself, just living her life in the mountainside, but she's going through the the book. I cannot remember the name of the book, which is actually referred to. Darkhold? Darkhold, yes. Which is actually, they used it in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. So they, I want to know if they're going to tie that in at some point. And um, she hears her kids' voices when she's doing her studying of the book. Which means that it can still go to the Mephisto plot line, which they can, you know, they can, they like to mold the characters into something different sometimes in the MCU because sometimes they're too minor to make their own. So it could be Mephisto and Nightmare together. 
and it could be what she's looking for in Multiverse of Madness ends up being, boom, I have the you know essence or soul of the kids, however it was in the comic books. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a possible plot line still, although we didn't get it there. I think, I think even though I have to sit back and think like, man, I wish they would would have, but I think I would rather on a bigger scope, not just give me one episode of Mephisto and I'm like, that's it. I would rather I'm doing on a bigger scope with that, you know couple hundred million dollar budget and give me like robbie said give me the full plot let me see what happens from beginning to end so i'm not getting just a 30 minute fight and maybe a resolution because we ended the show we ended that plot point but there there's no resolution to white vision which now has full vision memories with a artificial mind stone we have monica rambo going up to see nick fury with uh, talos and now we have wanda maybe going nuclear in the, in, in the mountains. So we never ended. Like, people are like, oh, the show ended. Yeah, the, the show ended, but there's, this is going to drag on through the MCU, through Phase 4, maybe beyond. Mm -hmm. Mike, I kind of hate that you brought up, as it didn't even cross my mind, that you want to release stuff slower to keep people <laughs> entrenched over mental, multiple months. Because it's just like shoes, man. It's like... Brands want you to take an L, so you will try to buy their product over and over and over again. And once you buy it, you'll keep buying it. And it's like, dang, Marvel's the same thing. It's nothing sacred. C can we have nothing where it's just like pure enjoyment? It's like, nah. Even 2K, <laughs> you, you, you got to buy coins. Fortnite, you got to buy coins. V-Bucks. Food. Food is the last frontier. The minute they start doing timed releases for food wait, wait. and gotchas, and it's already happening, so I'm just kind of talking out of my Fortnite. butt. There's food in Fortnite? No, V-Bucks. It's like you give it money and you can like buy skins. I I, uh -huh. I let my niece, I bought, I gave her 20 bucks in V, $20 in V-Bucks, v and she was so stoked, and that $20 was gone in like one second. What Literally. did she get? No idea. She She told me too, and I'm like, cool. That's why I'll never like, be good at 2K because I realize now you don't get good at 2K by knowing how to play the game because the game, the functionality sucks. You just have to buy everything and you become just a monster, basically. Yeah, you give it money and you are better than other people. But anywho, it's just it's it's so interesting to me how Marvel even Marvel Legos. It's like $150 for the for something cool you want in Marvel Legos. They'll sell it to you. There's always something. It's like, oh, you need this. Need some socks to go with your new shoes. You need a hat. You need a T-shirt. Need some Legos. Need some um, puzzles. Need some um, decorative kitchenware to go with your Marvel TV show. I look around show. my office. I'm like, oh, there's you. so many Marvel things in here. They got yeah, me. Man. You, need the, you got that duvet cover, though? <laughs> yeah, right? It's called a sham. <laughs> <It's> called a... <sighs> and it comes with the pillow covers. But... <laughs> question two, I guess next question. Next question. Is is Wanda now a character you like enough to have on your your pillow shams or your duvet? Is is she a duvet character now? Maybe not to you, but just think about Yeah, I'm trying to put it in my terms universe. of things. Will I go buy a comic book cover if it has like a really like dope Wanda cover to save as a collectible? Yes. That that's my version of that. Was it yes before the show? Um, she wasn't high on my list. I'm not gonna lie because I knew the story. It wasn't like, oh, she's a minuscule character. I just she has so much back history that it takes forever to sift through it all. She's been retconned a few times through the books, and now they actually retconned her a bit from Age of Ultron just so they could get that Fox property in. But it was just too much to go back and just you know research basically. Mm -hmm. For me, no. For little girls everywhere, yes. Because I think at the end of the day, it's that Ray syndrome in a sense. You are taking this boy or man dominated genre and instilling not only a woman, but probably, correct me if I'm wrong, Mike and Robbie, but the two most powerful women or the two most powerful individuals in the MCU now are women, right? Between yep. Scarlet Witch and Captain Marvel. 100% right, man. Mm -hmm. Nothing can touch them right so, now. So, I mean, I think, yeah. And. I don't know. I tend to like my characters to be wise ass and smart alecky. So I don't think she's going to supplement uh, Thor. I don't know if she's going to take over, let's say, Spider Man or Doctor Strange. But 
just the sheer power of what she's capable of doing is an interesting point where I will be f- focused in on her because I think she's going to set the tone of the phases going forward, like we've kind of alluded to. But I will use this opportunity to kind of go back at something you said, Mike, because that end credit scene, to me, there's a couple of different ways to interpret it. Mm-hmm. And I figured I'd have my Marvel Dream Team right here to kind of walk me through what their perceptions of that scene were, because my thought was, She's either reading a dark hold and she's found a spell that has allowed her to hear her kids and maybe she's crafting her kids mm-hmm. or she reading this and then she hears their kids through something else altogether. And that's the multiverse thing. So that's how I was trying to interpret, like, which one of those things could it be? But like I said, she is fascinating. She is going to be the heart and soul of the next phase because they are delving into magic and that's. The same way they've gone into space with the Guardians of the Galaxy and Captain Marvel, now we're going into magic with her and probably Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. I, and on your theory, Rod, I think it's the the latter. I think she heard them. It was like because you see her face, this this yeah. expression when she's reading, and she just kind of pops up like, "Oh, there they go!" Like, crap, uh-huh. I didn't expect this. And but she's she's studying Let's that book. It. She's studying mm-hmm. when she's about to because uh, Agatha said you're stronger than the Sorcerer Supreme, which is. Clearly, Doctor Strange. So that's going to be either a heck of a fight or a heck of a throwdown with the the main antagonist of that movie. Mm-hmm. It's a very subtle flex. It's like, oh yeah, you're stronger than Sorcerer Supreme, like NBD, by the way. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I I, re- I mean, I read it as her just getting. She said before, like the last five minutes of the show. I don't know my powers yet. I don't know my powers do yet, but I will. Something like that. Yeah. So her, like, they just left it so open-ended. The plot threads can go. They know what, where it's going to go. But to us, we can spend the next year and a half saying, oh, where could it go? Um, 2022. <laughs> so, Robbie, what about you then? Is Scarlet, Wall, uh, Scarlet Witch now a must-see in terms of, okay, if she's there, I'm going to stop everything and I'm just going to de- dedicate whatever it is that this content needs me to dedicate to watch her or is she still kind of on the fringes? I like her. I like anybody that can make things go boom. The Hulk's still my favorite, which is like the opposite of Scarlet Witch, but she's up there. I mean, as the roster has depreciated in terms of death and people getting really old and, living their best life for a bit. This things change. Yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see where she places when just other people aren't around. Like when, when you don't have Cap and Iron Man anymore, that's like the two top spots for a lot of people. It's like, well, I guess Wanda's my favorite now. Like it, she, like the, the, the door is open. And I think that's why it's so important to have this show first instead of like Winter Soldier and Falcon because you've had a couple of outings with those characters. You you know yeah. Sam a bit more. You know Bucky a bit more. Yeah. But Wanda, and the, we keep leaving out Vision for the most part, they were just you know, kind of throwing the bucket characters in terms of how big the ensemble was getting. So letting them come up first right after a lot of other people are incapacitated or gone allows them to slide up and towards the top, which means they can start creating. I know they weren't making Wanda duvet covers. They are now though. Yeah, best that they are now. <laughs> they definitely have. And they have like, I mean, the internet's just so funny and like the power of popular media. Cause yeah. all these like vision memes, all these memes from the show. It's like, you know, directors are now taught to be like, all right, we're we're gonna have this angle and you're gonna make this face. Meme and worthy. it's gonna be Yeah. We're gonna have oh, everybody think, on the site. Yeah. I think Drake's extended his career because of the fact that he realizes how memes are so important to today's youth. And it, I have this weird theory that he comes up with these memes and he's like, Okay, how do I build a song around this? Because <laughs> he's the most memeable rapper there is. Like that's a lot of his success now is the fact that he can transcend his songs. So if you're not a hip hop fan or an R and B fan, you know at least Drake's gonna give you one fire meme that you're gonna be yeah. able to multi purpose use for whatever scenario you encounter. Yeah, well dude, the Agatha Wink, that's gonna be it forever. 
that has been used that? since the the Joe West Coast uh, Joe West Coast whatever his name is that has been used countless times about oh now sneakers aren't going to be backdoor. Yeah, there's that uh, the the Vision Rock homage where he's wearing the black like <laughs> turtleneck and the fanny pack, and I think he's even got a little goatee to him. <laughs> yeah, he put like. <laughs> I mean, we saw this with Last Dance. I know we're banned to use that particular meme because I, in particular, probably worn it out. But there is a lot of credence to that theory that all these shows now have to have at least one to two memes because that is now the testament to how long they stay in our minds because no longer is it my name is my name or these iconic phrases. It's just, okay, it's, uh, what is it, Weebay in the tire shop just... <laughs> I took it personally. That is the new important dialogue, so... We've digressed as we a species do. so much. We're like, phrases, too hard. Give me picture <laughs> yeah, moments. Picture books. Picture books. Always. They're worth a thousand words. It totally makes sense, right? True. They are worth a thousand words. <laughs> but it's like, E2 Brute? Nah, man. There's a picture of a dude rolling up with a knife behind somebody else. Like, that's just, that's just <laughs> I don't what understood it is that. Now. I understood that one. <laughs> exactly. Who's Brute? Like, what the? F yeah. So. On a scale of one to five, what would you rate WandaVision? Five being the best. I will give it perfect. 4.75. There's always room for a little improvement. and But I give it a high score because they the formula was perfect. 30-minute bites. You led me up. Gave me 45 minutes at the final episode. And just you gave me just you, want, you left me wanting more. I just I don't ever I never seen a perfect TV show, that's why I think four point seven five four point eight maybe like the highest I'd probably ever go. I'll give it a four out of five. I think it was good for what it was, which is it gave Wanda more fleshed out retcon origin story, mm -hmm. and it got us excited for the next thing. Exactly. Granted, we probably will have to reevaluate how we view the show three to four years down the line because now we'll have the whole phase four there. So we'll see, okay, how much of did WandaVision telegraph without us knowing about it in the moment? Mm -hmm. Go back to the open questions that we had. Like right before the finale started, I had sent a text to the Discord saying, these are the two questions I still kind of want to know about, which was one, are we going to hear about Ralph? Because everybody thought Ralph was either a nightmare or Mephisto. We never got any other mention of Ralph. So that was one thing. The second thing was, who was the person that Jimmy Woo was after in Westview that was a missing person? So some people had mentioned, I forgot who it was specifically, but I also kind of agreed with it. Was Ralph going to be the missing person that Jimmy Woo was looking for? Mm -hmm. That may not be the case, but we don't know. It's just we have been conditioned and trained as Marvel watchers to pay attention to every throwaway line because yep. you'll have instances of, oh, who's the aeronautical engineer? We all think it's Reed Richards. I just heard about it recently. It was actually the woman that Monica had the different truck built for her as she was trying to go through the hex. That was the aeronautic engineer. But yeah. we are just conditioned to obsess over every single piece of detail, just thinking, aha, I knew it when I called this six months ago when WandaVision was in episode four and now it's multiverse. I knew it was that person. I'm a genius. But four, four out of five for me. 3.5. It would have been a four if you didn't drive a Buick. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't want to watch you in a Thank Buick. You. I'm like, don't they have like Acuras and like nicer cars? Audi it's not even a nicer time. car. Have it, be, have it be a nameless car. What, what, why do you got to put a branding on there? Like we all know, bills, Tony drives Acura. Like you said, Tony drives Acura. Um, Lexus was in there for a bit. Like, is, is Wanda not on the same payroll? Is, Look, is, she's, is Wanda... she's an entry level Avenger. She just got oh. there. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. But you're telling me a mother bleeping Buick? Really? <laughs> it was a company car, is right? She, is she an admin at Intel? Is she in between career? Like, what is this? Like, at the bare minimum. A Lamborghini Urus, Urus, whatever. I'm so angry right now, I can't even pronounce it. But she is Did a she soccer can... mom. Like that is who her archetype was going into the show, especially as she's going through the different decades of yeah. TV. You she went to Kelly Blue Book. Station wagon. I got an answer for you. We got to remember, remember. So, uh, in game, remember they all lived at the compound. Remember that thing yeah. got blown up. So maybe she went to Enterprise Rent a Car. Only thing I had left was a Buick, and she had to get to, she had to right. some stuff to do. 
Okay, let's do this. Role play. I'm the guy behind the counter. Oh, Scarlet Witch, you know what? I only have a Buick, <laughs> but since you saved the universe a couple times, here's a BMW X3. All right, look. My man. As a former enterprise manager, I spent four hard years of my life there. There's never any cars. <laughs> like, there's the never any the cars? nicest thing you're getting. You're either getting a Charger, an Impala, you know what? The Buick's the nicest thing you're going to get. Let's just, I'll okay. be completely fair with fair you. Enough, fair enough. Or you can I defer to your spot Because there's nothing ever there. There's nothing ever. <laughs> or Versa. You want a Nissan Versa? I got tons of those. She went to Kelly Blue Book and was like, this is, <laughs> this is economical. This is in my price range. But so does Vision have Tony Stark's payroll? Because he, he's Jarvis, really. He knows all the passwords. Like, where did he get the money to buy a deed to a plot of land in Jersey? I mean, he did it before he's dead, though. Like, I'm sure Tony. No, but no, but how? Like, he got a couple with, dollars. With, with, he's on payroll. He's a visitor. He, he has a check every two weeks. He is the payroll, Mike. He is like, the like, payroll. He gets and that's his what, own check. My man was that's an further what I'm saying. <laughs> that's Jarvis in Vision's head. But he yes. replaced Jarvis with Friday. So no, he was he was out of a job. He was like, look, you can either be a uh, vision or you can be Jarvis. You can't be both now. You can't be running payroll and work. Double dip it. He still knows the he still knows the online login. <laughs> and Wanda's his girl. Wanda should not be driving uh Burgundy Buick. <laughs> but he I'm was dead Robbie. by the time her fantasy. Blew up. He didn't he didn't no, have that left. No, but to to Robbie's point, he had the foresight or the vision to get a deed to the house, get a matching whip with it too, right? <laughs> it was like it was the next thing. Look, are you telling me that he spent most of his life savings? Like, <laughs> what happened? Did he not hit the quota from a vested perspective? Like, you have to be an employee of Sark Enterprises for seven years before you get stock options. Like, was, I mean, was he, he was like there for three, three years. Don't this get invested. Well, I guess, okay, we can flip it though. White Vision got all his memories now, so. Of course, maybe, White Vision got it. I mean, of course, White Vision got it. Brownish Red is Vision what, did. I don't know. Brown Vision did. Are you telling me the Red Vision died because the White Vision had to live? Because that's no, the North American history in a nutshell, if we want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, I'm, not, I'm not touching that one. <laughs> that's crazy. Okay. So, I mean. Of, Oh, speaking of white vision, where, where, when do you think we're going to see him next? Because he went out to go find himself. I don't, I don't honestly, I can't think of a good place where they could put him in unless it's like Avengers 5 where he just pops up again. I, I just wouldn't know where they would insert him. In. So who's funding Winter Soldier and Falcon? Falcon and Winter Soldier for their show. Like, uh, I think so. Like who's funding them in the sense of who's the show? I mean, like, cause oh. they're flying around, they're doing all these things, they're doing like secret agent man stuff. Looks sure. like 007 things. Yeah. Like, who's the MI5 or the CIA behind? Them? Yeah, who's funding their right. operations? I, I initially was also hesitant because I thought, were you asking like who's going to be the advertiser? Like, are we going to have this conversation? Yes. <laughs> like, no. like, who's paying for this stuff? I think it's really, yeah, it, really Falcon. You got a Ford Focus. He I mean, might. No, I would assume people. it's got to be some form of shield or sword, right? Because they're almost trying to do a bait and switch with sword. But the uh, I, oh my god, Agent Carter's was it her niece or grandniece, whatever it was? She's in the show, and she works for the CIA now after Shield got disbanded. So you just uh, rebuild a shield, which sword is looking real shady right now already. Like sword's already infiltrated with like terrible people for one go one one outing. So I want to say a CIA, possibly. Okay. I'll go with CIA because I think Shield is gone. Sword, we don't know that much about them, but I do yeah. get a nefarious read off of them. I don't want to derail the show yet again, but I also have thoughts about how Captain America made out with said niece and then went back in time to be with her great aunt. So that's another show for another topic. Yeah, that's a whole other... <laughs> they got to explain that one. To what somebody. are our expectations going into a Falcon and Winter Soldier? Like, are we going to get a buddy cop thing? Are we going to get Winter Soldier 2.0 where it's just going to be these two guys unraveling this very question that we have? Because my read, based on just the trailers, is I think they're going to be fighting whatever organization is funding them. Because it just seems that type of atmosphere and ambiance coming off the trailer. Yeah. I'm getting the... Uh... 
the bad boys of the MCU, you know, two guys who got to get the job done. We're going to argue the whole way or like lethal weapon style. Um, 48 hours. Before, yeah. Yeah. You know, something you're going to get that. Like I said, that, that kind of buddy cop type movie slash show, but I'm expecting some good things from it. I mean, they have reduced the episode size to six because they're, they put more money into them and they're hour long as opposed to 30 minutes. So I'm expecting a lot of good things. Uh, I'm not sure the lead-in is going to be there um, because since everything's going, like Roy mentioned, we're going to magical course. I don't know where this one's going to tie in. Is it they're going to end up having to circle back and talk about the Westview anomaly? Is it going to go into something completely different? We get some more, you know, espionage type movies. So I, I kind of want to know where it fits in, but I think overall as a show, I, I have some pretty high expectations for it. I th- I mean, where it fits in the timeline, I think, is very important. Mm-hmm. I think they're going to use this to kind of like tie either tie up loose tie up loose ends from like the let's say this the Civil War era, mm-hmm. kind of what happened between that Steve Rogers and the gang going underground and Thanos coming. So like yeah. they're going to put that together. When it comes to vibe, I'm thinking it's going to be more of like 007, but it's two 007s. So, like, there's going to be, obviously, 2021, it's not going to be, like, sexualized like that. But there's going to be, like, a damsel lady who needs, like, help me, Falcon, to win a soldier. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but from? I think it's going to be, like, it's going to be, like, kind of like 007-ish. But, like, secret agent men. Yeah. So, kind of Austin Powers. <laughs> But not Austin Powers at all. Like I still watch it. I love Secret Austin Agent Men. Yeah, yeah like uh, Jack Ryan, right? Because I think we always get caught up with a secret agent tending to be British or having that kind of suave, mm-hmm. sophisticated nature about them. And the one thing we know about both these guys is they're definitely rough behind the edges. And it almost seems like they're coming to grips with the fact that the big guy is no longer there. And in that case, the big guy is Captain America because he kind of served as their leading man for a sense. And it's yeah. very easy to be a role player when you've got the guy. And now the guy's no longer there and it's a, okay, how do I identify with this? Because they're both, and I made this argument kind of with Wanda as well, is this is almost the era of the uh, secondary characters getting some extended run. Watching Age of Ultron, that was probably the closest thing we were ever going to get to a Hawkeye origin movie or a Hawkeye story before Mm -hmm. the show is supposed to drop at the end of this year. And now we're seeing WandaVision go through that because they were both secondary characters. I think the point that you might have made, um, apologies, Robbie, if it was you or if it was Mike, was the fact that these characters have always kind of operated as a second option. They're the guy that's in the corner shooting the corner three, or they'll make the timely stop on defense, but you can't expect them to lead a movie for whatever reason. Now we figured out the medium or we figured out the format for these guys to have leading men and leading women looks and presence on camera. And that's where I'm interested to see, because I think Anthony Mackie is going to be a fantastic Captain America, but is Marvel bold enough to pull that trigger? Well, they said they will. So there's already been leaks of merchandise for the show, like toys. You know, I got to put toys out. And they already have him in the, which is apparently pretty comic accurate, the Captain America slash Falcon suit. And the show's supposed to be him coming to grips of bearing the shield, like bearing the responsibility of being Captain America. And dealing with the U.S. agent who's a maniac who the government tries to replace Captain America with. Which, by the way, we still haven't even seen his face. If you look at all the trailers, they won't even show you who he is. So I, I almost want to say, because there's rumors of Chris Evans still like being under contract or signing a new contract. I almost want to say if they cloned him and some nonsense like that and it just went wrong. But we have to wait for two weeks to find out. Um, but I... I I'm just, I'm, again, I, I think it's going to be a good good story of him building up from, all right, I can't be the secondary guy anymore. I have to be the guy in charge because at this point, Captain Marvel's still off-world doing whatever, so she's not leading the Avengers. They need a leader. There's, they are literally a bunch of, I guess lack of a better word, a bunch of Ronin out there. All their, their leaders are, are, are dead or are gone, so they're trying to find their own way, and he's got to step up. Because Cap literally passed the mantle to him, so. Hmm. I don't think there's any uh, clone Capness. Oh no, on, this is complete but... conspiracy theory. But they, they, the only reason I said it because they haven't shown U.S. Agent's face, 
mm-hmm. at, at all. And it keeps, okay. it, it just rumors of Chris Evans apparently coming back to a, a role at some point. But I have, that's complete speculation. I doubt it's even a thing, but it would be pretty, pretty cool if it was. So, yeah. like, I am seeing somebody cast in the role as the oh, U.S. Are? agent. Okay. Yeah, but I, I won't tell you because it's not Captain America. Or, I'm sorry, it's not, it's not Chris, uh, Evans. Chris Evans. No, there you yeah. go. But I think the rumors I've heard about Chris Evans is the fact that he is going to be, and granted, this is all speculation, so apologies if this turns out to be a spoiler 18 months from now. <laughs> he's supposed to be in the multiverse movie because I think they're going to do some sort of new world building, no matter how temporary that new world may last. Mm-hmm. And ironically, they've got somebody who's already had his family member in the MCU with Kurt Russell, who is in Guardians of the Galaxy 2 as Ego, his son is going to be the new U.S. agent. So his name oh, is really? Russell. Yes. Ah, see, look at that. That's why we have these group therapy sessions. We can figure this all out together. <laughs> so also, there is that Marvel What If stuff. And I know oh, I Chris it. is in there. So maybe that's where he... I, well, he was already filmed that. That one's already been done. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah it's all animation based. No, but I think that's the one I'm most looking forward to seeing because Solid. I think a we get certain sentimentality out of the way because I believe that's the last thing Chadwick Boseman did for Marvel, so it'll yeah. be nice to see that. But I think at the end of the day, we always tend to forget that this is, the source material is comics, and comics are always at the becks and whims of the artists and the authors that are writing and drawing them. And I have very high hopes for that because. There's just that Looney Tunes aspect of a cartoon being able to give you a little bit more than a real life TV show or movie can. Most definitely, yeah. Because you're gonna get a little bit of Marvel zombies in that one, I think. Yeah, Which, I that, love that. That story might be line. your Marvel zombie fix. Yeah. So like, I'm not. I know you're never gonna get that in real, you know, live action movies, but I'll take it in the cartoon. I'm okay with that. If it's as close as we're gonna get to zombies and Marvel, then it's as close as we're gonna get. Yeah, so, it. Take what you can get. Man, that's all. I don't want to really go too much longer on the sneaker podcast about Marvel. So <laughs> we're we're gonna wrap that up today. But that was some good talking, good conversation. Listeners, let us know what you think. If you're in the Discord, I'm sure we have. Well, I know we have a TV movies area, so Show we can points. talk about it there. But uh, don't be a stranger. Let us know what you're thinking. I'm Robbie. You can find me at Sneaker History. But uh, Mike and Ro, where can they find you guys? Yeah, man. You can find me on Sneaker History as well. Instagram and Twitter at MadWatcher789. And, of course, Mike Gilroy on YouTube. Rohit, man, where you at? I am at RohitM13 on the Instagram, at Rohizi on Twitter. And I still owe Nick and Robbie a piece of content for the website. So I will hopefully stretch my muscles out and type something up over the weekend. Stretch your fingers. You don't want to get uh, carpal tunnel. I've got a hangnail that's going to be the death of me. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in, and have a good night or day or evening, what whatever. Peace. See you. Bye. Hey, y'all. Nick Ingvall here. Before you take off, I want to thank you for listening to the Sneaker History Podcast. It really means a lot that you would spend a portion of your week hanging with us, and if there are any ways that we can improve the podcast for you, please leave us a review on iTunes. If you're looking for more content from the Sneaker History crew, head over to patreon.com slash sneakerhistory and join us for as little as five bucks a month. That also gets you access to our Discord group, which is a lot of fun. Also, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel. We just started uploading our videos there now, so you can watch the video version of the pod and a lot more. Last but not least, tell someone you like their kicks today. It's a small gesture that can go a really long way to making somebody's day a little bit better. Thanks again, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Hey everyone, this is Nick again. Before you take off, do us a solid and head over to Apple Podcasts to leave us a review. Give us a rating on Spotify and Amazon Music, and make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel because we have even more video content coming soon. Speaking of new content, we have an amazing community of sneaker enthusiasts that hang out in our Sneaker History Discord on a daily basis. While sneakers is a connection point that brought us all together, we've all discovered countless shared passions that we have in common with each other. We recently launched a couple of new podcasts directly from our community. One of them is a Formula One podcast. If you're an F1 fan like me, the Exhaust Notes podcast is your weekly fix of Formula One fun. It's hosted by myself, Rohit Malhotra, and Todd Yates. New episodes drop every Tuesday. I've been wearing fitted hats for years and collecting my favorite teams since I was a little leaguer. It has been awesome to see so many new fans getting into fitteds in recent years. 
Crown and Stitch is our new talk show about fitted hats with Dexter, Keith, and myself, where we talk about fitted hats, snapbacks, throw in some obscure hats because we all kind of like some funky stuff once in a while, don't we? Copping, collecting, and so much more. New episodes drop every Wednesday. Hit the links in the show notes for this episode to give our new shows a listen and be on the lookout for more new podcasts dropping soon. Last but not least, tell someone you like their kicks today. You never know how far a simple compliment can take you, and we all know how good it feels to have someone show their appreciation. Thank you all for the support, and we'll catch you on the next episode. Peace.